Hi, this is Ralph Cole, Legislative Representative with the American Occupational Therapy Association. I'm joined by my colleague Tim Nanoff, uh, Director of Federal Affairs, and we're here to discuss some issues um, of importance to the profession of occupational therapy and the patients we serve. I've heard a lot about the Super Committee. How is it going to affect OT? Uh, the Super Committee, that's, a, that's a, a very good question. It's sort of in the news now, and I think everybody hears about the Super Committee all the time. But what is it, and how is it going to affect OT? That, that's that's how, what we need to get to here. Um, the Super Committee is a joint, that's actually what the, the technical name for it is, is the Joint Select Committee on Deficit Reduction. And what it is intended to do is to bring the House and Senate together in a bipartisan way with Republicans and Democrats uh, to to negotiate on how to move forward with deficit reduction, to reduce spending, to raise revenue, um, and to, to manage the costs of government and the operations of government. We have uh, three senators, uh, if Republican senators, three Democratic senators, and at the same time we have three Republican House members and three Democratic House members. The two uh, chairmen of the committee are Patty Murray from Washington State and Jeb Henserling, the Republican from Texas, and Patty Murray is a Democrat as a senator. Uh, that is what the super committee is, and what they are tasked with is the unenviable job of trying to get 1.2 trillion dollars in cuts. Uh, they're supposed to come up with these decisions over the next 23 days, I believe it is. Yes. I think it's November 23rd. And to come up with uh, $1.2 trillion in cuts in federal spending. At the same time, they're supposed to address other key issues, such as uh, the Medicare physician fee schedule cut that it is proposed. A 25% across the board cut uh, is, is going to happen if Congress doesn't take action. So you have to throw that into the mix, that high-end coster, as well as the other cuts they have to make. Um, I think it's a real challenge for occupational therapy. There is uh, danger because of the way that the committee is set up. Um, there is a requirement that they get to $1.2 trillion in cuts. If they can't get there, they go through the sequestration process. And maybe, Ralph, you can talk a little bit about what sequestration is, since it's such a strange term. So if they fail to meet their November 23rd deadline, it's what, what is known as sequestration will go into effect. These are mandatory cuts from um, certain aspects of spending in the federal government. Um, it would have to be a 50% of the reductions would come from military and agricultural spending. Um, and the other portion will come from Medicare and other additional um, federal, word. different federal programs. Yeah, they, they, they discretionary the spending is the word I was looking for. That's right. Um, and this would include a two percent, um, two percent cut in overall Medicare spending, which could be very problematic for OT and the and you know the patients that we serve. An another big problem moving forward is this committee is not tasked, does not have to meet the one point two trillion dollars. They can come up with a plan that saves 400, 800, 600 million dollars, billion dollars, you know, whatever that number is. Uh, and this is probably the, the worst case scenario for occupational therapy and Medicare, you know, because in that situation, they can identify cuts to Medicare in the first round, only reach 400 billion dollars. Those cuts can come out of the Medicare um, fold. And then at, when they do the additional 800 billion dollars, to meet that $1.2 trillion number would also include that 2% reduction in Medicare spending. So this would be kind of a worst, worst case scenario because we'd be, we'd be taking a double hit um, if they fail to meet that $1.2 trillion by November 23rd. No one wants to take a 2% across the board cut, which is what Medicare would get under the sequestration process. Uh, but it also protects Medicare from bigger potential cuts. You know, as we said, there's 50% that would come from agriculture, 50% uh, in, in terms of, of what their overall spending is could come from defense, military spending. So Medicare is kind of protected. And as Ralph said, we, we, but they also face a double whammy. If they make some specific cuts to Medicare and, and to different, different types of services, could be rehabilitation, could be other things. Um, let's say they make $300 uh, billion in cuts to Medicare, which would be very high in the committee process, but they only get to 800, 800 billion. There is still the other $4 billion out there that would come through sequestration. There'd be a second process um, where they'd get another 2% cut over the top. So that's, as Ralph said, that's, that's the real danger, that, it's, that it is a double whammy. 
Um, and we have to place this into the context of all the other problems we have. As I mentioned earlier, there's the Medicare fee schedule cut of 25% that Congress has to proactively stop. There's the Medicare therapy cap that uh, Congress has to proactively stop or else it's gonna come into a place in January 1. Um, and then on top of these cuts, uh, you know, going, looking at the, the reason for the cuts is that the, the current federal budget is considered largely unsustainable by particularly the Republican leadership, but even the president and, and some of the Democrats are recognizing that we're spending too much at the federal level. So these cuts um, need to happen to strengthen the American economy. However, there are some serious threats out there for occupational therapy. What we're doing at AOTA is meeting with every one of them, uh, of the super committee members and the leadership, and educating them about our issues, letting them know how important occupational therapy is, what the consequences of not providing occupational therapy to somebody who needs it, somebody who has a stroke, is in a hospital, is in a nursing home. Uh, we want to get them back home, back to their life function and participation. Without OT, they're not, that's not going to happen. And I think a positive from our perspective is that we have long established relationships with several key members of the super committee. So we're working hard with you know already established champions of occupational therapy throughout this process. So it kind of gives us a, a leg up in that they understand our issues, they understand the importance of being able to provide quality care to, to patients and beneficiaries who need it. Patty Murray, the uh, the Democratic chair chairwoman uh, of the committee, is was probably our champion in the health care reform bill on workforce issues on uh, getting rehabilitation and habilitation into required categories of service. Um, and Javier Becerra on the House side is the lead Republican, uh, excuse me, the lead Democrat on the therapy cap repeal legislation. So we have friends on the super committee. Now we have to see what that committee is gonna do over time and maybe we'll come back and report to you on that. And we've, we've also been engaging our membership to help advocate on this issue. Um, we've, we've worked to identify members of AOTA who reside in the districts of the people who are sitting on this committee. So we've been working with them to you know, have them advocate as constituents, which is always an effective tool when trying to get your, you know, your point across. This is an important question, but we're actually looking for more of your questions. Uh, so if you have any issues you'd like to see us address, please submit them uh, to AOTA's website. Thank you.